Welcome to today's technical assistance session for the New Jersey State Library's American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 grants for New Jersey Public Libraries. I'm Jen Nelson, State Librarian, and I'm joined today by Kathleen Moeller Pfeiffer, Deputy State Librarian, and our Grants Manager, Eileen Morales. As we're here today, we're going to talk through the ARPA grant application process. I'll give you some pointers in terms of filling out the application and hopefully answer some of the questions you may have. Um, and with that, we'll get started. Next. Uh, as a refresher, um, we received $3.9 million from the Institute of Museum and Library Services for, our, uh, for an ARPA award. We are making $1.8 million of that available, up to $1.8 million available for grants to local libraries. Our best estimate is that we'll be giving out between 50 and 75 grants. Um, in two categories, mini grants, which are grants that would range in size from $5,000 to $25,000, and major grants, which would uh, range in size from $25,001 to $100,000. I'll just note that the bottom line of $5,000 um, we put in as a result of the amount of paperwork that's needed to complete a grant agreement. Um, it really doesn't seem to us to have a lot of value beyond uh, for grants that are much lower than that, since this paperwork is the same for both. I would also note that in our recent CARES grant opportunity, the average grant request was $6,000. So this is bringing us in at a reasonable number that should satisfy most folks. The grants um, are going to be reviewed and scored by a three-member review panel on a 100-point basis. As a way to address disparities in the state, we are going to use the Municipal Revitalization Index ranking uh, to award points to applicants from distressed areas. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, the MRI index ranking will be checked by New Jersey State Library staff as part of the application process. I want to note at the moment, too, that this uh, technical assistance session is for a competitive grant process. You may have heard about a literacy project that the State Library is working on with New Jersey State New Jersey Library Association and the uh, Plainfield Public Library. This information does not reflect uh, that particular project. There will be a webinar on that project on uh, June 30th. Next slide. So in terms of why we're doing this grant opportunity, um, it really is to respond to the big picture of economic and community needs that came out of the pandemic. In proving it out, we do have to meet some priorities. Uh, the Institute of Museum and Library Services priorities are around digital inclusion and library services that meet community needs, which, as you can hear, is fairly broad, um, as well as the New Jersey State Library's Five-Year Library Services and Technology Act plan priorities, which are around information access, institutional capacity, and lifelong learning. Next. So there are several important dates to note for this ARPA grant round. Uh, these dates are listed on the ARPA page of the State Library website and on page six of the application guidelines. On Friday, June 25th, we'll post the first Q&A document on our website. It will consist of questions received from potential applicants along with our responses so that if you have a similar concern, you'll have a common resource to consult. We'll update the Q&A document on a weekly basis through July 23rd. Perhaps the most important date is the application deadline, and that's July 30th. The application submission portal closes that day at 4 p.m. After the grant review is completed, grant award announcements will be made around August 27th. The grant period begins September 1st, 2021, and ends August 31st, 2022. Mid-year reports will be due March 31st, 2022, and final reports will be due September 30th, 2022. Please remember that funds are distributed on a reimbursement basis, and the final date to submit reimbursement requests will be September 15th, 2022. Next, we'll discuss the application process including the application portal, 
and required documents. The complete grant solicitation, including the guidelines, application forms, a link to the application submission portal, and portal instructions can all be found on the ARPA page of the State Library website. All ARPA grant applications must be submitted through the portal. A complete application consists of information provided in fillable fields in the portal, documents that are required of all applicants, and documents required based on application category. Please see the application checklist on page 12 of the guidelines in order to confirm that you have all your responses and required documents ready before you log into the portal. Once you are logged into the portal, you'll have to select either a mini grant application or a major grant application. Recall that mini grants are requests from $5,000 to $25,000 and major grants are requests from $25,001 to $100,000. Whether you click into a mini grant or a major grant application, the process is basically the same. In both cases, you'll have to upload or attach required documents and complete the fillable fields. The fillable fields consist of basic organizational information, such as the library administrative entity name and address, and the library director and project director names, phone numbers, and emails. We also need information that helps us set up grant agreements, if you're awarded, such as the taxpayer identification number, the library's fiscal year end date, and the DUNS number, which is a unique nine-digit organizational identifier. You'll also need to input a 120-word executive summary of the project and the total grant request amount. Now we'll talk a bit about the required documents that you'll upload in the portal. Next slide. The documents consist of forms to be signed, including forms A and C, which are certifications, form D, a set of assurances, form E, which addresses the Children's Internet Protection Act, and form F, the resolution to apply. These certifications and assurances indicate the terms, conditions, and requirements of a grant award. The budget and narrative round out the required documents. For the budget, please use Form B, the Excel spreadsheet. For the narrative, if you are applying for a mini grant, you'll use Form G, the mini grant narrative form. If you're applying for a major grant, you'll create your own narrative document following the format indicated on pages 11 to 12 of the guidelines. All documents are to be submitted as PDFs. Next, Kathleen will discuss the mini grant and major grant narratives in more detail. Thank you, Eileen. So for the mini grant narrative on Form G, you can see on this slide what we are requiring. We need a project title, a project description, your project activities with dates, key project personnel, including roles and responsibilities and a partnership description, if applicable, and your budget justification. For this, you need to itemize and justify the requested funds and you base it on form B, the budget summary form. Next slide. The major grant narrative is a little bit different in that it's a create your own narrative. We need to hear, to hear from you on your statement of need, your project goal and outcome, your project design and timeline, project personnel and partnerships, including the roles and responsibilities for both the personnel and the partnerships, and evaluation, sustainability, and a budget justification. And this will be based on Form B, the budget summary form. The major grant narrative should be a maximum of 13 numbered pages. Include the applicant name and project title at the top of the first page. You please use a font size of at least 12 points and at least half inch margins on all sides. Next, Jen will discuss the budget. When constructing a budget, um, we wanted to just give you a little bit of information about um, what we're looking for. Um, over on the one side, you see reasonable, necessary, allocable equals allowable. Um, any 
requests that you're making for uh, costs for your project need to be reasonable, necessary, allocable, which means they're allowable. Um, and our budget form is set up uh, with uh, sections that identify those uh, categories that we're able to provide reimbursements in. I would note that there are a number of unallowable costs that cannot be charged to your grant. This is not a complete list of those, but um, food pretty much is, is out. Um, any kinds of trinkets or uh, marketing collateral and that kind of thing is not available or allowable. And uh, finally, um, costs that can't be allocated um, are not allowable. Things that can't be allocated include things like the cost of lights, uh, heating, uh, copy machines, the kinds of things that are used generally by an office and can't be isolated to a particular project or cost stream. Um, as you think about your budget, um, you'll want to um, remember that we're looking for costs that are, are reasonable. One of the uh, things that I found over the years with grants is people tend to ask for too much money um, and then end up not being able to spend it all. So we ask you to look at true costs um, for uh, your project, knowing that uh, the true costs are probably going to be a little bit of an overestimate anyway, as we think about um, how a project actually unfolds. So we encourage you to do as close to, to reasonable budgeting as, it, as you're able to. Um, we also uh, would suggest that you um, have somebody in your finance office take a look at your budget um, to correct and see any formulas. We have formulas in our spreadsheet. We want to make sure that um, those don't get broken. They're important for us for determining things like the, um, the uh, indirect rate and indirect costs, which uh, I mean, I now has a few words about. So as Jen just mentioned, Form B, the budget form, is an Excel spreadsheet with pre-populated formulas. Please be sure that entered amounts are discussed in the budget justification section of your narrative and double check your work as you enter your dollar amounts. Next, we'll talk about indirect costs. You may choose to request reimbursement for eligible indirect costs incurred for this federally funded project. An indirect cost is an organization's costs that cannot be readily isolated or identified with just one project or activity. As Jen noted earlier, these are not individually allocable to the project. These types of costs are often referred to as overhead costs and typical examples include office space, utilities, telephone and internet costs, and administrative or financial operations for the entire organization. You must choose an indirect cost rate if you choose to include indirect costs in your grant request. You may use a current indirect cost rate that you've already negotiated with a federal agency. And if you do choose this rate, you'll be asked to submit your approved federal indirect rate plan letter if you are awarded a grant. Or you may use an indirect rate proposed to a federal agency, but not yet awarded. I should say not yet approved. Or you may use a rate not to exceed 10% of the modified total direct costs, the de minimis rate, if your organization does not already have a federally negotiated rate and you are not subject to any other requirements. When determining the amount that can be charged to indirect costs, the modified total direct costs must be used as the amount of funds that the indirect costs are calculated against. The modified total direct costs is the sum of all direct salaries and wages, applicable fringe benefits, materials and supplies, services, travel, and up to $25,000 of each contract or subaward. MTDC, Modified Total Direct Costs, excludes equipment with a per unit cost of $5,000 or more, capital expenditures, rental costs, scholarships and fellowships, participant support costs, and the portion of each contract or subaward in excess of $25,000. Or you might choose not to include indirect costs. 
So if you have questions about indirect costs, which are complicated or can seem complicated in any case, please see the references to further information in the grant guidelines or send us an email to grants at njstatelib.org. And Eileen, I would also make a note for folks that if you choose to use a de minimis rate, you do need to use that going forward with any federal grants that you apply for. You can't switch it up and say, I want 10% this time and 5% the next time. So you wanna be really careful about that. I would also note that um, our budget does allow for cost share. A cost share is not required, but if you choose to report a cost share, you do need to be tracking the dollars spent and keeping accurate records of it for auditing purposes. Thank you, Jen. So once you've figured out your indirect costs and your entire budget is complete, don't forget to save it as a PDF so that you can upload it in the portal. Next, Kathleen will review, will discuss the review criteria. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, for our review criteria, it's already been noted that we are going to have uh, three reviewers for each of the two grants. We are looking for applications that target a high need community within your service area. You do need to describe the community to be, to be served supported by appropriate and relevant community data. We need to see a well-defined benefit or planned benefit to patrons demonstrating it is user focused. The application should make a compelling case as to why the project is needed in your community. The application provides us a detailed description of the project, its goals and its activities. It will also describe any collaboration you have planned with other community partner organizations, detailing benefits to the library and to the community partner organization. Please remember that with so many libraries in New Jersey, we do not know all the details of your library ourselves here at the State Library, so you really need to provide a very thorough description for us so that we understand your particular situation. The application should set achievable, measurable outcomes and present a reasonable method for you to collect the data. The application should demonstrate consideration of its ability to sustain the project impact beyond the grant period. And finally, as Jen has alluded to previously, funds requested must be for reasonable, necessary, and allocable, i.e. allowable costs to achieve the project's goals. The application should provide the rationale to support how the proposed expenditures were determined and why each one is needed to achieve the project goals. Jen? With um, the bonus points, we have said that um, applications that serve communities with certain MRI municipal revitalization revitalization index distress scores are eligible for an additional up to five bonus points. Um, this is to give a little bit of an advantage to those libraries that are serving communities in high, high need as documented by the MRI. Um, those that have an MRI distress, distress score between 185 will receive five additional points. Between 84 and 70 will receive three. Between 69 and 50 will receive one bonus point. Uh, communities that score lower than 50 on the distress score index will not receive any bonus points. Next. So now that we've covered all the basics of the ARPA grant application process, here are a few last tips. Regarding your DUNS number, if you don't already have one, or you don't know it, or aren't sure about it, reach out now to Dun & Bradstreet so that you're not stuck with the task of figuring it out at the last minute. Remember to get signatures on forms that require them. Double check your numbers on the budget form. Make sure that the costs you discuss in the budget justification section of your narrative are reflected in your budget form and vice versa. Costs included in the budget form should be justified in the narrative. Ask someone unfamiliar with the project to proofread your narrative. Write a short 120 word executive summary 
and be certain that all your application documents are ready to attach when you log into the portal. And if at all possible, submit your application in advance of the July 30th 4 p.m. deadline so that you're not rushing to submit it at the last minute. Now Kathleen will share what to do if applicants have additional questions beyond what's listed in the guidelines or what we've just discussed. Thank you, Eileen. So if you need assistance, send a message to grants at njstatelib.org. We have already received one question and we'll be posting these weekly throughout the grant application period. And this Q&A document will be posted to the State Library website. Go to njstatelib.org slash ARPA. And Jen will complete our presentation. Thank you for your time and attention, and we look forward to seeing your grant application in the near future.